everybody. Um, so this is the final thing of the ASP.NET um, mega thing that uh, Scott kicked off yesterday morning thing already, right? Um, so this is bleeding edge ASP.NET. So the focus here is we're going to cram way too much into one hour. Part of the reason Scott's here, as you'll see, he is principal code monkey. So I, um, he tells me he knows a bit about ASP.NET, so we'll see how that works. We are partly going to, we're going to introduce the ASP.NET Fall 2012 Update Build Preview. We're working on a better name. And <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. So honestly, we, yeah, we're going to get this. Yeah, I'm gonna, we're trying to fix the name. I'm working on that. I, so. I do think that it will include long pointer to a null terminated string at some point in the version number. So, so this did just come out yesterday. We got the, the preview of it. And um, so we're going to be demoing a lot of that during this talk. And then at the very end, time permitting, if you're good, we'll show you just a lot of random craziness. And the, the point behind this, name notwithstanding, is that we talked about this idea of one ASP.NET and externalizing a lot of the things so that we can move ASP.NET and the web tooling forward without having to rev Visual Studio 2012. So this is kind of the first experiment in that, to move towards that one ASP.NET way of doing things. You can install this without fear. Right. Nothing goes in your GAC. Nothing will change. It will not move your cheese. Uh, this is a, a tooling and templating update. And this is a preview of that. So for later in the year, around December, when we release this thing, to, to kind of prove to ourselves and to you guys that we can do this maybe clear every six mm -hmm. months and give you small, appropriately sized Lego pieces that won't uh, change your existing experience, but will improve your new experiences. Right. So as Scott said, this is not going to mess with your existing projects. We had a, uh, somebody just ask us about this this afternoon. They're saying, I'd like to check it out, but I'm worried I have some production. And so this adds new templates. It adds new tooling to Visual Studio. It does not mess with the runtime, right? Yep. So there's no new MVC4 changes. Exact same MVC4, exact same ASP.NET 4.5. No craziness. Yep. I've, I mean... This is a preview, but I've installed this thing a bajillion times and works on my machine. And there's actually a number of under-the-cover installer improvements that are kind of going to streamline installation in the future. The goal is that you will load up Visual Studio, and once a quarter or once a every six months or so, I haven't quite decided, you'll get some toast, mm -hmm. a balloon, and you'll click it, and then you'll get a little update. And then, this one's pretty small. I think it's about 40 megs. And you'll right. get this kind of regular, interesting updates to ASP.NET. Yeah. So... 40 meg, and it is, I've installed it and uninstalled it a ton of times. Five minutes, five to seven minutes. So it's, it's, uh, there's a lot, that is, as Scott said, one of the under the hood things is this kind of, uh, what did you say? It's a D something ising the installer, right? It's kind of breaking things apart. You've got NuGet, V6, and, uh, not this huge kind of right. like, Brrr, like what is my hard drive doing now, for those, an hour? those are five to seven Hansel minutes, which in right. Visual Studio is about 90 minutes. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you need an SSD. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> we're going to show a lot of demos. That's the end of the slide. <laughs> That's, That's, the end of the That's slide. all the slides we've That's got. All our slides. Good night, everybody. So, we work pretty hard on those. <laughs> great, a great deal of work and effort were put into those slides. Right. So, uh, <laughs> whoa. That's, well, I'm uh, switching to you. You're no. going to switch to three. Oh, yeah. What's okay. on three? So, what Scott's going to be showing us first, we've got what is broken up, what, is, what comprises the fall update. There's two things. One is adding goodness to existing things like Web API and MVC. And the other thing is adding brand new templates. Oh, I don't have it installed. Should I install it? The fall it right preview? Now? Yeah, should I install it? Sure. You go ahead and just uh, talk and pay no attention. Right. <laughs> okay, so uh, Web API, uh, what, Scott, what we're going to be looking at is, first of all, help. So when you write an API, you need to tell somebody how to use your API, right? You don't just click around an API. It's not discoverable. And so you, uh, I talked to a lot of people about how do you do this? How are you writing your API documentation? They said you type a lot, right? But one of the advantages of Web API is that it is defined. It's an API controller. It has methods. The methods have types. And so we can introspect that, and we can figure out exactly what... <laughs> No awesome. pressure, man. Yeah. I can so, use your machine. Do you want to demo on my machine? Sure. Okay. We'll just let those eight processors work on that. Yeah. So if you, um, yeah, just do a new. Okay. So that's two? Two. So what Scott's going to do first on my machine is uh, file new MVC4 application. You'll see that there are some new templates available. <gasps> so uh, we've got, uh, but we're not going to talk about those. I'm getting Can you ahead fill of this white space with goodness later? I would like that. Uh, so, Web API. 
There you go. That's Dude. weird. <laughs> Doesn't quite look so lonely anymore. Right. <laughs> Okay, we're creating application 19. Sorry, of course, you realize I'm here to make John uncomfortable and throw him completely off his game. He's when we a, looked at this, we said there, there's no way that we can I'm get through these 60, or the, these presentations in an hour. Let's throw Scott into the mix, right? <laughs> That's okay. a good idea. So, so if you hit F5 on this, this is a just uh, an app, you know, basic MVC application. And, well, and this includes Web API, but the yeah. point we should also point out is that Web API works with web forms or web right. pages or whatever. So we've right. got Web API here. Okay, so uh, click on that. Next, next to the home, there's an API link at the top, top right Ooh. corner. Yes. That's new. It is new. So this is, what this has done is it's actually gone in, looked at the API controller, looked at the, uh, the actions, looked at what everything takes. You can drill into these and you can find out information. Now, if you've got a complex type, it'll go through and it'll figure that out a lot of the time. And this okay. is installed as an area. Yes. So you can actually go in there and make that look like whatever you want to. This is not, not rocket science. You can change it, you can theme it, you could uh, make it produce machine readable stuff if you wanted, or you could make it produce something that matched into your, um, your layout and your can theme. You, can you expand out help, help page real quick? There's, uh, I think if you look in, I'm going to get myself in trouble, I think sa sample generation. Let's go off script. We're only right. five minutes into the talk, shall we? Uh, the, fir the top thing there. Which one? Yeah. That one? Yep. So this is a bunch of code. You'll see that it's, it's using JSON. It's going through and it's just inspecting stuff, right? So the point is, that's this not scary at all. Well, <laughs> <laughs> point is, right. it's it's a for loop. Let's, right, let's, just, let's right. just break it down, shall we? Yeah. <laughs> so let's <laughs> let's move on to tracing. Okay. So if uh, Scott, if you can browse, that wasn't to a failure at all, John. All right. Uh, so do I hit? Do I hit something first? Slash API. Slash API. Slash values. Slash values. And that's values because it's the values controller. Yep. And now it's trying to give you JSON, and don't worry about that. Okay. So it tried to give me JSON just then. Yep. Because I just so, made a get call to API's value. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And then let's also go to slash. Uh, Wouldn't I have had to have been debugging? Yes. Okay. API. One more time with feeling. You're missing Phil Hack right now, aren't you? He's right there. Okay, so if we look at this, you'll see that this is actually unpacking exactly where. Uh, oh wow! Look yes. at that. Okay, so this is all. New. I've, this, I've never seen this before. This is all new here. Yep. So the reason that this is helpful is because Web API has this kind of. I've, I've heard it referred to as this Russian doll thing, where it's kind of things are stacked inside other things, right? Mm -hmm. So you've got delegating message handlers, you've got configuration, you've got all this stuff you can override, and so it's a little difficult sometimes to figure out why something did what. And so this, this gives you that. Right, and this gives you an insight into that. And it's using the existing system.diagnostics tracing stuff. So you already have trace listeners and things like that that might be hooked up going somewhere else, right? like um, uh, through Log4Net or plugging it into Glimpse or whatever. Anything that's going into tracing will show up. So it doesn't necessarily have to go to debug out. Let's look. If you can open up App Start okay. and go to Trace Config. All right. So this is using, as Scott said, this is diagnostics, trace, all that stuff, right? So the point is that you could plug this into any other trace listener. Very cool. Okay, cool. so that's new. Let's look at OData. OData. So do you want to? You can browse to it or whatever, and I'll uh, I'll talk. So so if I go well, if I go to here, right? I yep. want to enable OData. Now OData had a very prescriptive way of doing CRUD over REST. Yeah. And Web API has a very flexible kind of do anything you want. You're in total control way of doing things. We talked briefly about this in the in the keynote. Right. I can go like that. Yep. And that enables what? Let's run this thing. It breaks your app. And I'm going to run it in because uh, I'm an equal opportunity browser. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to say values, right? And this returned XML. So I can now say say like, I don't know, top uh, one. Yeah. So I still so have, have yeah. the web API that I have total control of, but right. I've got what filter, top, order by. Yep. So, and, and so what it's giving you here is, uh, and this, this throws some people off, this does not mean that you're buying into OData as it's going to give you some heavy XML payload and you've got to become 
like an, an OData like MVP or something, right? This right. is just you're using OData query syntax. Exactly. You're not you're, you're you're buying into the part of OData that I think we would all agree was the most fun and the most popular, right. and the one that people liked the most. Yeah. OData is still great and used for things like SharePoint and SharePoint List, and is a really good crud over REST. This gives you the best of both worlds. Yep. So, and actually, if if we look, I, we. We're good on time. Let me show that I've got another demo. You get all the time in the world. Please go off script. I'll just throw this away. <laughs> so I've got another app open. John, this, well, you did say you were going to pay me one million dollars. That is your actual quote. If we uh, have extra time left over at the end of this, I did say that. Okay, because we have yeah. like nineteen demos. Nineteen. Right, so go, I felt pretty go, safe go, about go. the million dollars. Um, <clears throat> so we've got this thing here. Uh, I'll just run this app. The thing I wanted to show was that the XML you, or the uh, JSON you're getting back is pretty lightweight. So if I make sure this it's, is called dead air, by the yes. way, just FYI. And make sure it's turned on. Right. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I've got. I had a uh, where I was just querying for books, right? Slash API slash books. I'm going to change that to turn on some uh, OData query syntax. So I'm going to go in and type a tilde, which is nice. Okay, so if I get rid of that, so it's already running. I'm going to refresh it. And you're doing that. So you're in knockout there. You're making that call, and that's going to change the way this binds. Right. So. There. So now I've got my call to API books. And Zoom. yep. Zoom. So that's going to API slash books. And if I look at my summary or at my response body, the point is that this is just this is pretty lightweight JSON, right? So the entire thing, if I unzoom, that's my entire response for five books. So I just right. thought that was kind of cool. And notice at the end on line 25 there, we've got this next. And this is kind of cool. It's kind of a, just a tiny little a nod of the head to, um, oops, to uh, hypermedia. So let's go back in there. And you've got, here's where I would go to get the next ones. Skip five. Yep. Very cool. So that allows somebody else. And actually, in this, in this knockout code, the way it's doing it, it's not hard coded in there. It's actually saying, get that next value and go to that. So. It's got oh, this. okay. So you say view model next page data underscore underscore next, yep. as opposed to going and trying to build that query string yourself. Right. Very cool. Web API. Magical. All right. So now this is the demo that will fail. This is, I told you it wouldn't, but I think it will. That's comforting. <laughs> Thank you for telling me now. <laughs> Not an inappropriate time right, at all. For right. Telling me that this is so, fail. so the idea here is I'm going to tell you the story of normally when I create a new MVC application, there's one thing on the list that I personally don't use, and that's because I'm not building intranet applications. An intranet app, thank you. An be, intranet app, yeah, go for it. So an intranet app, normally you need, to, you need Windows authentication. So that means you need to all be on the same network. So a week ago, do you want to go ahead and create that no, one? No, you tell me what to do. I'm yes, the monkey. Please. Yes, okay. sir. So I'm creating intranet? Intranet. Okay. Yep. So the idea here is, what if you've, you actually want to have an intranet in the cloud, the magical clouds, right? So I want to, um, in this example, we're going to use Office 365 okay. for authentication. And uh, the idea is that me and actually Dan Roth showed me this demo last week. He's mm -hmm. the PM on the Web API team. I thought it was very cool. Can you right click on the project and say enable? Ah! Yeah. Sorry. Try and find enable Azure Auth. Okay. Yep. So I'm actually, let me, t let me. Uh, you don't trust put, me to type it? Well, John Galloway. You're really uncomfortable with that. Actually, no, it's not John Galloway. That's, that's why. That's why. Okay. Win Azure Auth dot. I'm sorry, what? Hmm? <laughs> Win Azure Auth dot on Microsoft dot com. I realize that this breaks, it's still on you. It's true. And regular expression. <laughs> <laughs> I've got plausible deniability. Is that now. good? Yeah, enter. So what this is going to do is it's popping up a thing and it's saying, I've already logged in to my uh, Office 365 here. So it's gone out. It's got the, the certificates. It's figured out. It's added some stuff to my web config, and it's all magically set up to authenticate. Now. So this is using Identity Foundation? And this yes, stuff to your Windows, web identity, Windows Identity Foundation. With. With. Yes, uh, definitely a product that will succeed. <laughs> 
So now what I'm actually going to try and do, this, this is the hard part. The easy demo here would be to just run it. And you'd see, actually, that it goes out and it makes me log in it at Office 365, and then okay. it shows. But what's more fun is that I'm going to deploy this to an Azure website. So I'm going to create a new website here. So intranet authentication in the cloud. Yes. I like that. That's Oops, I think I, I don't think you can have a semicolon in there. <laughs> Got to check mine. Is that, are you seriously going name? Yes. <laughs> you know, the reason is because when I'm creating this intranet, it's for my, my company, and I really think it's going to take off. Yeah, I'm sure. So, that's, uh, <laughs> isn't that the name of it? I think there's actually a, a volcano in uh, Finland. <laughs> right, that is, uh, <laughs> right, right. Okay, so what I've done is I've, I've spun this up, and I'm going to download my package, my, excuse me, my publishing profile. So I've clicked on that, and I'm going to save it. So publish profile is just, you've probably seen this 90 times this week, but publish or profile. Or in the keynote. Yes, if you're awake then. Thanks. They're in the morning. I, I see John <laughs> later in the afternoon. I'm oh, really sorry. Yeah. I slept through the keynote. Uh, I Thank think you this... for supporting me. Right. You so can, You can also go build. And publish too, in case that that it's just, in it's, case you screen. You know, there's not enough that. things there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm going to import those published profile settings, and of course, it's to do the first Okay. <laughs> and then I publish this. So now, <laughs> now it's going to ask me if I want to enable that again, right? It's logging in. Now, here's the part where you're enabling it for release versus debug. Is that what's going on there? What? It, what? I'm, no, this is enabling it for my Azure website. Oh, okay, so that, now it's, it's associating with that URL. Yeah, so what's going to happen is I'm publishing. Now, it's going to pop up a browser that says a scary error, and we're, we're going to look why in a second. But So it's publishing my intranet app up to Azure websites. I've got Office 365 already set up that I can log into. And so now it's going to pop this up, and it's going to say that there's some kind of error there. And the reason is because I'm already logged in using my non-fake account for Windows uh, for Office 365. So I'm going to, did you know the real reason for in private browsing is to get around Not this? deleting your cookies? Right, exactly. OK. OK. Way so better. It is better, OK. <laughs> I have a backup. I have a backup. Can you explain what's actually happening, though? It's, so what it's doing is it's logging in. Uh, so. Oh, well, well, hang on. You, just, you already logged yourself in. Right, that's so, the point. So, so the thing is that you didn't. Can you log out and do it again? Like, can you like, or is that what no, I don't know. No, I don't know. I mean, in here, see, that's part of the thing is I've already logged in, and this browser is. So the idea is sure. that you've got this federation set up on your 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 um, Active Directory, or in this right. case, the one that Office 365 is providing. Yep. You take whatever your existing intranet app is. Right. Put it up in the cloud. You've already got SSL and things like that. Yep. Whereas your websites have SSL turned mm -hmm. on by default, and then you are doing this federation, this, this Windows Identity Foundation federation login. Right. It goes, kind of goes, goes back to Office 365, makes sure that you're a real person, comes back around, and you're really logged in. Yeah, yep. So, so you could, are you saying that I could access this, be on my intranet, but I don't have to VPN into work? That's the point, right? So, so we start up, you know, we add Scott to our, Dan and my company, we go into Office 365, we add him as a new account, he can log into this, right? Without, I like the without VPNing in part. W that's it, yeah. So. Okay, very cool. Shiny, so shiny, shiny. Signal R. Okay. So we've talked. Did you install yet? Uh, oh, yeah, no, this was done long ago. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, Signal R, who saw Damien Edwards' talk? Wasn't it glorious? Isn't he just dreamy? Where is he? <laughs> no? As soon as I said dreamy, they're like, no. <laughs> not the, the applause is, yeah, he's awesome, great, but dreamy? No, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely not dreamy at all. I like him. All right, can you see that? All right, so SignalR, it was an open source project that Damien and David worked on. Right. And it was just so freaking awesome that we, you know, we had to make it happen. So it's been brought over, and they've done all the legal stuff, and the lawyers, and the copyrights, and the whatnot. So then there's the SignalR open source project, mm -hmm. and now there's Microsoft SignalR. And can this is a really. Can you explain what SignalR is? You guys don't know what, you guys know what SignalR is, right? Some people oh. may not. What? Hmm? Maybe not. If only I had an animated GIF <laughs> to explain what SignalR is. Shall we? Is this completely off script? Yes, of course it is. 
Is this completely prepared? No. This is going to help me not pay you that million dollars. Do I speak to myself in the third, in the third person? Yes. Do I think this is going to go well? Possibly. You did tell me earlier how scary it was that you're getting to be like a PowerPoint MVP. Dude, do you realize that they're giving away free soda here? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Ordinarily, when you want to talk to uh, a web server, you make a get, right? It's pretty straightforward. And I think we all remember the very first time that we saw that. And we thought that was real time. <laughs> right? I mean, in your mind, you're like, Beep boop, 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 boop. Oh, it's like it's you know, searching two billion flights, you know? And it's all a lie. <laughs> and what happens is you talk you, you you say now, you say get data, yeah, get data, get data, get data, you get data, you get data. You we learn that that lie was just an animated GIF and a meta refresh tag. And it's just <laughs> it's bad. So the way it's supposed to work is you go and you say, hey, do you do real time? Yeah, I love real time. It's cool. Hey, let's do real time. Real time. <laughs> Scott Hanselman, ladies and gentlemen. So, so, so SignalR allows you to have this, this fallback. It makes real time happen. Now, there's multiple ways to do real time. Right. There's, there's server sent events, and there's forever frame, and there's web sockets, and then there's long polling, yep. which is better than regular polling. They did not like my idea to do the uh, GIF sockets. Have you heard about yeah, that? Yeah, you can do GIF sockets, too. <laughs> it's actually an infinite animated GIF that never ends, and then you yeah. just encode the data in each new frame of the animated GIF that never ends. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> you know? so, the, so the two things that are exciting about in the fall update SP2, whatever right. thing. Is that we can say add new item, and when I come in here, SignalR is right here. And this is really, really important because we've had people say, well, we, we can't use your products anymore because there's just too much open source. I'm going to make a big differentiation between uh, the kinds of open source that are like, like Chromium and then Chrome, right? There's the Chromium browser, the open source Google Chrome browser that no one runs except the guys that work on it, and then there's the Google Chrome. Right. There's SignalR, which is going to be the ongoing, continued to be developed, GitHub-hosted SignalR project, and then there's Microsoft SignalR, which is when we took a, kind of a, a snapshot of that and said, this is supported. Right. Same thing with NuGet. So this is here. This is real. You can use this. It is supported. Uh, we can support it. We will call, you will call support, and they will say, what's SignalR? And then <laughs> we will... And then, and then we'll eventually teach them what it is, and there'll be a PowerPoint and some GIFs, and it'll be great. But I want to point out, this is Microsoft ASP.NET SignalR. It's part of the larger one ASP.NET strategy. It's a real thing. I can say new hub, new persistent connection. It's real. Use it. It's awesome. Yep. We're using it. All, gosh, everyone's using it. Yeah. And we have an amazing SignalR demo later. It's going to be awesome. Yes, it's true. Sure. And you saw, you probably remember um, Scott Guthrie's demo, the first uh, first keynote, where he fixed uh, Scott Hanselman's demo to actually give real time feedback to a uh, Windows 8. App. I wouldn't have said fixed, <laughs> well, but uh, it's a gentle modification. Right. Right. Okay. So now we're going to look at. I think we're done with the adding cool stuff to existing things okay. part. Is that, like, abstract enough, adding cool it's stuff to cool. existing things? Got, we've got 90 seconds. I can show the monkeys or I can wait. Uh, let's do that at the end during, during okay. the, you know, the monkeys will be that later. part, the monkey part. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is new templates. So, again, I do an MVC4 app. So we've got two new templates. And actually, I want to make one comment, though. I st we still continue to work on the idea of unification of these things. Right now, you'll notice that we're adding templates here in MVC4. Web forms, people shouldn't feel bad. It's just that this is a really great way to put stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, in the future, we're hoping to have some kind of file new ASP.NET app, right. and then everything will be unified in that one place. It's so kind of like, hey, we'd like to ship something. Where can we put it? Let's drop it in this guy. Right. We're right. trying to. We, we are moving towards unification. Right. And so, which is part of the thing of like installing things as v6, installing things as NuGet. Right. It's easier to break them apart, and it's not this big like we're waiting for a big Visual Studio release to put all this stuff in. Mm -hmm. It's really lightweight. Okay. So I'm going to create a new Facebook app. And the important thing is that this is not Facebook auth, right? 
So we had Facebook auth in, uh, oh, look at Scott, like he's going to disagree with me. No, I'm not <laughs> So uh, Facebook auth, we added in MVC4 and in Web Forms 4.5. And what that allows you to do is log into a site, not using, you know, your user doesn't have to register with the username and password. They can just click here to log in as Facebook. They go over to Facebook, they log in, and then they come onto your site, and it says, hello, valued customer. And that actually brought in yet another open source library, the .NET Open Auth library, included not just Facebook, but also Twitter, Yahoo. Yeah. Yahoo, Google, uh, Microsoft account, and LinkedIn. Yep. Interestingly, the uh, all of those except I think Google is the one provider that's Open ID only. Mm -hmm. So, but we also do support Open ID, sure. and you can go in. I don't know if it's in. And here. for the two guys that use LinkedIn, they're super yeah. excited about that. It's. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. Uh, you can show me a guy that uses LinkedIn and Opera. <laughs> I'm going to buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> things that this will do for you, one is this makes it so instead of just logging in, you can write an entire app, uh, Facebook app. So you, this is something where you would give someone a URL, they, it requires them to log in at Facebook, it demands some, it requests some permissions, it, it says I would like to know your friends or I would like to know your birthday or that kind of thing. And then it when they log in, it bounces back to your site sitting inside of Facebook, so it's like a frame. Right. You could do all this stuff before, but you had to go and read, you know, <laughs> like you had to go to the Facebook <laughs> SDK. <laughs> it's hard work, right? <laughs> I mean, come on. Oh, no, yeah. That's <laughs> programming, reading. Right. You know. It's like, so, Pick so one. there, there is a uh, Facebook C Sharp SDK uh, NuGet package and it's actually a, a guy on my team works on that, uh, Nathan Totten. And um, so he sat down with the MVC team. The guys all worked together and shook hands and stuff. So this is using that, uh, that NuGet package, but it's pre-configuring a lot of cool things. So one thing that's, that's neat is this Facebook authorize. So you just drop this on a controller action, and it's going to require, it'll bounce you over to Facebook to log in. But what's also neat here is this uh, permissions. So it says, I need email permission. So the, the, this brings you to the Facebook dialog, and it says, you know, this application would like email permission, yes or no. And basically, so Facebook handles that. You're making Facebook a demand. That. You're demanding, I want yeah. email, and I want friends, and I want this and that. And then Facebook will say, if you allow this, right. that's what this means. It will give you email. Give you this yep. That. So that is item number one that's cool. Item number two is it's binding to this My App user. So My App user. So not your app user. This is uh, this actually is a Facebook user object. So I talked to Eric about this, Eric Porter on the MVC team, and he said uh, the thing to point out that make sure people get from this is that you could just bind directly to Facebook user, and it's a dynamic object, and it says it takes all the stuff that Facebook gives it, and you can dot into it at you know in debug time, and you can see what's there. But you can also say I would like you know I'm going to need email and picture URL. So you can define those as types, right? So that's going to be automatically populated? It'll automatically populate it. So if we look back, so much zooming. If we look back here, you can see that we're binding to like user and friends mm -hmm. and binding right into that. So what I'm going to show for this is a demo. Ah, it still scares me. Uh, if I go to birthday reminders, birthdaymanager.azurewebsites.net. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at your Amazon history. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. It's no judgment, no judgment. You don't know the hell. <laughs> You don't know the hell I live in. I have I have three daughters. I know way too much about. Although actually, um, they are now into venomous snakes. They think that's I, cool. Venomous the, snake Barbie is my favorite Barbie. I, I sure wish. <laughs> snake <laughs> snake handler Barbie. So I'm going to log in here on Facebook. The guy that that wrote this uh, Yao on the ASP.NET team, he said he did this in about a day. So what's cool, this is a birthday manager application that's actually like a pretty cool idea. So what this is doing is it's going out and it's looking at all my friends with upcoming birthdays and it's giving me the opportunity to buy them a present. Now, um, 
Well, I've been gone here. Actually, I, I know my, um, my wife has an upcoming birthday, so I'm going to check out really quick. Because I want to make sure that I buy her a present. Well, before her birthday, Up I want to be on time. three days ago. <laughs> So. Missed it by that much. <laughs> yeah, do you have some couch space? Is that uh? <laughs> yeah, you're sleeping at my house tonight, brother. So, so uh, I definitely do need to click on this button. It's okay with Amazon. With Amazon Prime, it'll still get there in time. <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> Back in time shipping, right? Historical shipping. How many, how many days Excellent. previous? Excellent. Yeah. Um, so one other thing that's neat about this is it has this, even down to this uh, thing where he said, buy him a present or buy her a present, right? Oh, that's cool. So, I mean, you know, just a neat little thing. And then, like, this is actually going out, looking at things that she's liked on Facebook. I hope I don't get in trouble. But, you know, so here's some, Hopefully, like... Hopefully, yeah, she likes good stuff. Yeah. So, you know, like, here's a CD, and I could go out and buy that. So he's actually hooked all this up. This is actually something like, man, you could build a business out of this, right? I mean, I'm making a few dollars. I'm build a business. That's a heck of an right? idea. And then Amazon and Associates. Exactly. So, Dude, and, he, and he did that in one day. So, wow, that's nice. Select? Very cool. Okay, uh, so that's Facebook. Uh, so we got Facebook off and Facebook apps. Right. That's new too. Okay, cool. Let's talk about uh, single page. Single page. Okay, let's switch uh, switch back over here. Three, number two. Three. Three. Okay. And we'll go new project again. And uh, people were asking about, about single page app. Because single page app, we had a thing that was in preview a while back, right. and uh, we didn't actually release it. So it was a preview, a lot of excitement about it. You're nodding your head. You're like, yeah, you suck. It was a year ago. <laughs> right. So single page app had a lot of opinions in it. Mm -hmm. And it was a really difficult thing because a couple of things. Single page apps aren't really figured out yet. There's a lot you can do. And you can talk to five different people who make a single page application, and they're going to tell you five different ways to do it. Do we they're need to say, explain single page? So, you know, single page app would be a page where literally there is just one page mm -hmm. uh, that gets loaded on the initial get, like Gmail, and then you move around and you forward and backward and you do all these actions, but you never actually ever leave that page. Right. And then you simulate that you're moving from page to page by using push state or using history APIs and things like that. So the user feels like they have a natural forward, backward motion on the web, and, uh, but you're kind of loading the whole thing. And then swapping divs in and out, or bringing JSON over the wire, and uh, it gives you kind of a little bit more uh, application-like feel. Right. Uh, the original template was very opinionated, and uh, was, but also at the same time didn't respect things like there's Backbone, and there's Angular, and there's Lawn Chair, and there's like every noun that you can think of. Dot JS. Like just pick a noun in the dictionary, and you know, uh, Deck Chair. Dot JS. It's probably <laughs> one of those. That's that's how it is. Ratatouille. Dot JS. Ratatouille. Yeah, yeah, I like that. That, one. that actually could really be a thing. <laughs> There's a lot of things out there. So what we wanted to come up with was one that was more educational and would set you up for success around single page applications that would work with existing ASP.NET apps, where mm -hmm. you could have a section of your site being single page. Maybe you're using Entity Framework or an existing persistence backend. So we did want to be so prescriptive and opinionated that we were going to say, "Thou shalt use these." JavaScript frameworks, but we also want to set people up for success. So this is just a preview that uh, that Mads and the team have been working on. So let's take a look at this, and I actually like it. It's it's simpler. It's more vanilla JS, yeah. I think than uh, than maybe previously. And I, I'm actually pretty pretty happy with how it turned out. I like the demo too, um, as, as this is starting up. But they give you like Scott saying this is really kind of more of a pattern. So a lot of mm -hmm. project templates are kind of more like. Here you go, get started. And this is kind of more like you F5 and you actually have something running. And it's, so it's more kind of like a, here's a recipe. Well, and something then, to get at the same time, you don't want to make a template that's going to try to be all things to all people. Right. So you don't want to, uh, to push it too far. So let's just see what it looks like initially. Of course, it's a to-do app. That's the requirement of a single page app. They all have to be to-dos. Right. I and mean, there's a, a really great website that actually hosts all the different to-do apps that are out there so that you could pick the one that makes you the happiest. That's a true story. Wow. What's did, it called? You didn't know that? I did not. What is the website for that? I need to, you know, can you put that on the list of things I should do? The things do? you should do? <laughs> Look at that site. Okay, so, so here's this here. Um, I'll, uh, I'll sign up. So that was, a, that was a single page thing. So we haven't left the page yet. And we'll add an item. Uh, John G. Uh, set up couch. Yeah. 
Oh, I probably should buy the birthday present. Buy gift. Gift. So but I should probably buy a gift for next year too. Can yeah, I it? you should. <laughs> just, you can, just jump you can on. set that up and get that get that going around um, now. That would be a good idea. Pre buying is it? Eh, her taste could change though. <laughs> Log back into this. I want to try it from here, and I want to see the the traffic. So you see, I'm F12 it, and I want to see what's going on here. Fancy pants. I think it's an update panel. Is what's there that? an update? Update panel in there somewhere? <laughs> Just try to. You're busy typing. I thought I could sneak it by. Well, you could certainly mess mess me up. So you'll notice that we're using Web API, right? right. So we're we're doing this work. We're typing and typing, typing. Enter, enter, enter. We've all never actually left the page here. And then here we've got a request to API to do that is saying here's that new piece of information. So we wanted to come up with a pattern that would enable you to to extend this idea. And then you could go out and explore other JavaScript libraries and, uh, and find one that makes, you, uh, that makes you happy. So here, we've got a really nice, clean uh, HTML5 front end here. And you look at that line 7 there. You're saying, if this is an authenticated user, then we show this section. We've got the header. And then you've got line 22 through 9 there for each to do using knockout data binding. And this is really comfortable also for, uh, for anyone who's done any kind of data binding in XAML or Silverlight or anything like that. Yep. And then you've got stuff like, uh, you know, here's the click event on the, uh, the little X for the delete to do on line 26. Really easy to read, and there's uh, no, uh, no code in here. It's very unobtrusive. And then else, if you're not logged in, that's that login that would pop in and out. On the back end, on the to-do controller, we're Just using Web API, right? Web API, exactly. And Web API, as we've said before, is a, an API that really likes HTTP. It doesn't try to abstract away HTTP. So here we've got put to do item. This is for puts, right? So we've got create, read, update, and delete, trying to use get, put, post, and delete yep. the way that they are meant to be done. There's your post. Here's things like bringing back HTTP status code created. So we're really using HTTP the way that kind of the restful folks right. want it to be used. It's and so then that allows, I mean, obviously this mm -hmm. would work very easily in the application, but you could even like extend this to Windows 8 app or whatever else you wanted to, right? Exactly. And so you get your single page and extend it elsewhere. And you could have, and again, as I've said before, uh, hybrid applications are a reality. People might have, you know, web forms for a charting reporting package, MVC for their front end and for their mobile, and they might have an admin section that's done in, in single, single page app with yeah. Web API tying it all together. You should feel free to kind of think about this as a cafeteria plan. ASP.NET includes real time APIs, component based technologies like Web API, mm -hmm. MVC pattern like we've seen before, yeah. and now, of course, things like Facebook and whatever. You can make it all in, uh, in ASP.NET. And this is really nice. It's actually only uh, 120 lines of code, and most of it's just um, uh, Mads being obsessed with a certain way of doing uh, curly <laughs> braces. I'm, I'm, more of a, I'm more of a C curly brace guy. Can myself. you show the JavaScript, too? Mm -hmm. There's those three JavaScript files in there? Absolutely. So here's to-do list. And again, this is using Knockout. Yep. So I think of these, and you can tell me I'm wrong, but I think this is like, there's the to-do list, which is kind of like, this is the overall logic of the kind of mm -hmm. app. Right? right, this is the, uh, when you think about, when you, you may have heard MVC used in the context of the client side. Mm -hmm. So MVC frameworks on the client side mean that there is a model view and a controller on the client, or in this case, kind of model view, view model. But this is the closest thing to a client side controller that we've got. Right, okay. And then it's calling todoapp.db. So within here, we've got database methods. And Which is, is and kind of funny because... It's a data access layer, but it's right. in JavaScript on the client. Yeah. So, I mean, but this is as close as data gets, right? You're issuing a query. It's separation, and it's separation of yeah. concerns, right? Yeah. So here we've got Ajax request, make a get, make a put, make a post, and make a delete, all using the HTTP verbs that we're used to doing, and then serializing that JSON kind of uh, seamlessly from JavaScript to C Sharp. Right. Okay, in this uh, case, we're using Entity Framework, but you could certainly use whatever makes you happy. We want to set these kind of Lego pieces up such that you can swap stuff out. We want to be opinionated without being draconian. We want to give you prescriptive guidance, but we don't want to lock you down to doing things a certain way. And I've said this before, and we'll continue to say it, that you should feel free to use whatever you want. You've, t you've seen Scott Goo himself talk about how if you want to do MVC, talking to Mongo, that uses a Redis cache, 
you should do that because it makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And, and that, that goes especially to deployment now with Azure. I mean, the whole idea is like, hey, use what you'd like. Use what you want, and whether that's Git or TFS or whatever, that's totally cool in the gang. So we are down to, we are through all the what's new in the fall release. We could have stretched it to an hour pretty easily, I think. Yeah, we could keep going through stuff that's new in the fall release, but we kept said bleeding edge, so let's show stuff that very likely will not work. Right, right. Uh, <laughs> Continuing in our tradition of demos not working, John. <laughs> right, exactly. So, so what we were thinking, when we were going through all these demos, we were like, there is so much stuff. Maybe if we hook up two laptops and we bounce back and forth at the very end, we'll just show a lot of them. So that's kind of what we're going to do. So to start with, I think, Scott, we've got you showing the jQuery mobile. Oh, yeah. Okay, so that, by the way, I just want to say that your use of Word uh, advanced ligatures is beautiful. This is, yeah. I, that, I, you know, did you actually know about this? You see how he's got the little curly deals? That's built into the font. That's like a real thing. It's Go so on cool. my blog and search for wedding invitations. You want to look like a calligrapher like that. It's Maybe that in. should be one of the demos. I don't think that has anything to do with <laughs> ASP.NET, but we should totally, should totally do that. Actually, uh, so is this me? It's you. All right, good. So let's go new project again. And here we're going to say mobile application. And uh, this is, now we've seen, you've seen mobile talks before, and you've seen we've got responsive design built into the intranet and intranet stuff. And in this case, we've got jQuery mobile included here with the uh, mobile demo to give you a guide, guidance of how that would potentially look. Uh, we've also seen some pretty cool demos using things like Kendo and um, Sencha and things like that. You can feel free to use the one that makes you uh, makes you happy. John, do you think that four instances of Visual Studio was possibly too many? How much room do you have for in your taskbar? Do they shrink? No, well, they just they kind of hang out around here with me. Yeah. I'm just thinking that I, I that. think I think four is a good number. <laughs> I'm just noticing it's slowing down as I start. To, I've got like everything open here. Right. So this is uh, jQuery mobile template. And you'll notice here that in this case it brought up uh, Chrome. In the corner here, if you haven't got Visual Studio 2012, you can pick your browser, add it to the different um, choices here, and you can also say Browse With. And I could even go and pick two browsers and then set those as default and then have multiple browsers be launched when I hit F5, which is pretty hot. You guys like that? Yeah. You murmur at that. We've been, <laughs> we've been sweating up here for 40 minutes, and you murmur at Somebody the choice of browser. A little bit. Yep. Oh. The opera guy's like, what? <laughs> opera? I love it. Ship it. <laughs> um, notice also that we've got the, uh, this, the uh, mobile studio from Electric Plum. Mm -hmm. Our friends at Electric Plum have an iP iPhone and iPad simulator, which is epic. And let's actually just run it like that. And uh, we can also go, we're going to set up uh, ASP.NET slash browsers. You'll be able to go and download uh, Windows Phone 7, Windows Phone 8 emulators, Android emulators, whatever makes you happy. Yep. So here's our, our simulator, and I can move around and do all my uh, jQuery mobile type stuff. So we, we talked to the guys at, um, and gals at Append2, yep. the jQuery kind of cons consultancy, jQuery and jQuery mobile consultancy. And they've got this, this theme roller that they, they would hook us up with. And you might notice that, that the, NuGet, um, the NuGet movement continues, right? If you haven't heard about NuGet, I hope you have. It is our package manager. And that package manager started out and continues to kind of be uh, an ASP.NET team thing. It's an open source project. Even you know, Phil Hack is from GitHub, and he works on uh, uh, NuGet and manages that. But it's in the Windows Phone SKUs. It's in the WinForm SKUs. It's in the Windows Store SKUs. You have NuGet now everywhere. So people are using NuGet all over the place. I actually made recently a Windows Phone application. And I wrote a whole blog post about it where I brought in NuGet packages from all over. So NuGet is becoming a bigger thing. Yep. Additionally, we're seeing vendors and things like JetBrains and folks at TeamCity make it so your build servers could pop NuGet out. So NuGet packages are part of that. So it's like chocolatey, right? Chocolatey, yeah. Chocolatey uses the whole, that. The, I mean, there's so many neat things to it, but one is that whole idea of dependencies, mm -hmm. right? So you, one thing depends on something else. So, so Mike stuff. and the folks at Append2 took a look at the jQuery mobile theme roller. Mm -hmm. Because jQuery Mobile is cool, but the problem is so many sites look like jQuery Mobile. So they, they did this here, and because uh, I felt that there was a problem where there was no hot dog theme. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, clearly the biggest issue that we had going on to us. Uh, can I make links different color too? There you go. Yeah. That's awesome. 
So I can go and say download, and now I could say download zip or NuGet package. So we'll say hot dog. Hot dog. Baby. I can download a NuGet file or download a zip, mm -hmm. and I'll bring this down. And I'm going to put this into a, a local NuGet server, although if it was a company, I could put this you know, potentially anywhere I, I, uh, I wanted to. Hot dog, baby, uh, new package. So there's hot dogs, right? I'll put that in my local NuGet server or up on my corporate NuGet server. Then I'm going to go back over here into my uh, mobile template. Okay, that's how it looks now. I'm going to come down to the package manager console. And I'm going to say install tab. Uh, let me see, install package. Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. Okay. Click, click, click. Hello. Oh, I didn't know. My keyboard. Install package. Hot dog baby. Hit tab. Right. We're going to install that theme now. So the theme that I just dynamically generated and then the theme roller guys kind of built, zipped up custom for me. And what, using that visual editor. And what that zipping up for you there, there's several things, right? You've got CSS, you've got possibly images, you've got all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So they actually dynamically generated a NuGet package for me. And this starts getting you thinking about what you could accomplish with NuGet, right? So we could take this and go into our, our layout. Da -da -da -da. And uh, let's, uh, let's stick that in here. And I'm just going to take that, um, that CSS file and just drop it right there. I could go and bundle it up if I wanted to, but you know, for the purposes of what we're doing, I won't. And uh, in, in here, we've got the different data themes. You can have data theme A and data theme B, and you saw that there were three different, three different versions there. So your hot dog theme could have had seven. It could have, been, it could have a different, different kinds of hot subtle dogs. hot dog variants. Boom. Huh? Now, in this example, though, we're doing this with just colors. But jQuery Mobile and templates like it don't have to look like the default themes. I changed the color. I drug some things around. But if you go take a look, for example, at the mobile site for Rolex at m.rolex.com, done in jQuery Mobile, you never know it. It doesn't look anything like a jQuery Mobile site. Because you don't want your site to necessarily have the same buttons and the same style. So there are a lot of possibilities beyond that. That's currently a lab that Mike and the folks at Append2 did on. And hopefully they're going to roll that into Theme Roller and you'll be able to download NuGet packages soon. So that's an experiment. Yeah. And that's something that we actually, I think Mike was working on it yesterday. <laughs> so this is definitely on the, uh, as I said, we have moved past the this shipped is, stuff. This is the craziness So time, see if right? you can do better than that. Right, okay. Well, so one thing I'm going to look at is bundling, or excuse me, is um, scaffolding. So the idea, we've had scaffolding in MVC, we've had different kinds of scaffolding like in Web API and things where we generate some code for you and often more than one thing. So if you scaffold out, say, a person controller in MVC, strongly typed to person, it's gonna generate all these views, edit, delete, and all that stuff, right? But why don't we have one that just works across one ASP.NET, right? The all of ASP.NET. So this is a, um, a prototype the guys uh, have put together. The guys in the lab have put together, I feel like Cave Johnson. It's the know? guys that do actual work. Right. So here I am on this list. You'll have to trust me. I'm clicking on Add Scaffolded Item. I could zoom. Add Scaffolded Item. I think we are going <sighs> to... Oh. Wah, wah. Okay, so what that would have done is pop up... Is that, is that something you can fix? <laughs> um, maybe. Hey, uh, it's, it's all you, baby. Hang on. Oh, 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 I can here, you, fix you, it. You I can't. I'll, no, go, no, over, I'll right. go over here. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah, yeah, this is helping, actually. If you can, can you turn it up? Okay. You got it? Yes. All right. So I right-clicked on that. <laughs> As I said, prototype, new code. I needed to open up the package manager console because it does some stuff. <laughs> right. I, like, I like that the back and forth here is... Uh, yeah, it's helping. It definitely is helping. You're, you're, you're an easier competitor than <laughs> Phil Hack. He would so, have crushed me at this point. I'm excited about the scaffolder. I'm just, I don't know about you. Let's see it. Okay, so I click on so this. Could, to be clear, this is a prototype. Now, I know yeah. that when you right-click there, it said add scaffolded item. You're like, ah, blah, blah, blah. Don't put more menus there. Yeah, we get all that. It's a prototype. Yep. So I'm scaffolding 
something based on this person class. And it's going to create a data context. And it's also, the cool thing is, a cool thing is, it's also got a mobile page for, master page for mobile. So that maybe should move over. Um, Prototype. Prototype. <laughs> right. But, uh, but what I wanted, that is cool. I didn't mean to, to um, yes. It's cool that it's also going to generate for me kind of like views. Uh, so it's building out pages that using that dot mobile extension. It's extremely cool. Yes. So you'll see over on the side here. We've got 10 minutes, so don't feel pressured at all. I'll just show, I will quickly show this, right? So it built out all these pages for me, and it's, it's got all this add, edit, delete stuff. Quickly run this guy. Dun, 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 dun. And this is exactly what you'd expect, right? So this is add, edit, delete. This is scaffolded all these things out. If I go to person. And one, one thing that we don't have time to go into, but is the whole idea of friendly URLs, right? So I actually just went to slash person. And this thing starts to use some of those. So I can go through and I have Fred Jones. I can delete Fred Jones. So I'm hearing you say that the meta point here is that we've got uh, Web forms, getting, again, more features that happen in MVC. We've seen in web forms um, model binding. Right. We've seen friendly URLs. You don't have to have .aspx. We're seeing scaffolding, and this scaffolding is extensible. So yeah. the same kind of fun generate, generation of code that you can do in um, MVC, you'll be able to do in other things as well. Well, and that, that is a huge point that I do want to get to here, is this, like, if, if you haven't looked at all this binding stuff, here we've got try update model. Is, is if model state is valid. All this stuff, if you do MVC development, this is like, hey, I know this stuff, right? So this is actually building things out for you the right way. And another meta point is that we're adding in, um, we're adding it, we're looking at this as a solution for all of ASP.NET. So I actually have another demo we don't have time for that is uh, MVC scaffolding, and it scaffolds out Azure table storage to the cloud, magical clouds, and it's, it does that all using that same um, scaffolding thing. Okay. Let's go to, you want to do Web Essentials? Yeah, start talking about Web Essentials for a second. I'm just setting something up. Okay. I'm going to show, uh, you know what? I don't think we have time for all the Web Essentials, so I'm thinking we look at something new with Web Essentials. Um, so Web Essentials, if you don't know, the, the Visual Studio web tooling stuff is insane. Like, it's got all kinds of, you know, autocomplete and CSS smarts and all this stuff. But what's nicer is... Um, that Mads Christensen and team are building things out and shipping things all the time. So they are shipping this Web Essentials extension. And you know, v6 install, easy to inst uh, install, disable, do whatever you want with. Here's an example where it's got TypeScript. And as, as I you know, go in and change something in here, right? so I can you know, go in and change stuff, and it's actually, as I save it, it goes through and compiles it on the right. right? I guess I need to. So as I save it, it's compiled. Now, another thing that people think about with, with you know, languages that generate JavaScript is, well, how am I going to debug that? So a neat thing that they've got here, I've got example.ts. So this is, a, uh, this is TypeScript. And you know, when I save it, it builds it out. But it also is building out source maps. And what source maps do is they give hints to the browser to allow debugging. So browser tools can look at this. Uh, it's just a little bit of you know, it's JSON data that explains what maps to what line. So this is actually, every time I save, it's, it's building out both. It's, it's compiling the TypeScript to JavaScript to a source map and a minified thing. So if I run this now... And this could potentially work with CoffeeScript or anything. Yeah, well... So I could actually kind of debug and find my way back to the line that did that. Exactly. So they have CoffeeScript support already, and uh, it's not doing source maps yet, but there is really nice um, support for CoffeeScript in there. So I'm going to go into Chrome. They have, in the, in the newer Chrome builds, they have this source mapping. You got mapping. enough toolbar buttons there, buddy? I'm working on it. All right. So, <laughs> uh, so now if I, if I hit F12, this is the, there? Yeah. Right? So this is the TypeScript that it's sending down. And Chrome says, OK, I got the source map. And actually, as I look, as I debug this page, you're worried you're not going to get to your monkeys, aren't you? No, it's OK. We'll we get the monkeys. Well, I got a better idea. OK. So what this is doing 
Is this going to freak out if I zoom? It's not. It's totally not. Right? So this is, uh, there we go. Okay? So I've hovered over greeter, and it's actually, the TypeScript is just saying new greeter. Right? But it's actually, in order to create a new object, the JavaScript is using this uh, a function to wrap that in a function. So it's a very simple example, but this is something where, you know, this is making it so you actually could go through and debug. You can, you know, go through and see what messages are coming through and what mm -hmm. and why. So. Um, and while we're actually kind of trying to warm up, we have five minutes left. Anyone who's got a laptop or a convenient surface-shaped device, I want to get that out and get a web browser ready. All right. Okay. Um, there's tons more in, in Web Essentials. I think you showed some, and also Mads Christensen did a whole session on it. Yeah, be sure to see Mads Christensen's. I figured like three of you would do that, but everyone else was bringing them out. All right, let me show the async stuff, and then we'll, yeah. do, the, we'll do, our, or do our little finale. Excellent. Okay, so this is one of my uh, favorite demos. This is not, you guys are getting your laptops out, so it's just going to boot up. This is separate from this. Uh, this is a really great example of why async and await are just so important. So this is all the code that we have right here. There's nothing else to see. We've got 20, line 21, 2, and 3, three synchronous calls to web APIs. Right? It's going to take as much time as the total amount of time that those three web, AP, uh, web API calls make. So if it's one minute, two minutes, three minutes, we might be sitting there for a while. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then we're going to go and uh, stop, our start, our stop our stopwatch. We're going to take the JSON that comes back from those and then convert them into objects and then data bind them. Real common thing that you do if you have like a dashboard with a lot of different things. And maybe you have a weather API and that thing tends to be slow and you've got something else. We do this code all the time. We do it right now. What we can do now with async and await, and this is actually a web forms application, is I can say task async to each of these things. Okay? Then I'm going to go and, uh, and mark this as async. Mm -hmm. okay? I'm also going to mark the page itself as async, the web forms page itself. Mm -hmm. Notice right away that the JSON conversions here say, uh-oh, you're not really giving me a string that comes back anymore. Well, we're not. We're giving it back a task. When that task is done, I'm going to go and bring back the result. So we're going to change those things to dig the result out of the task that came back. Because those three calls to download string task async is going to go boom, boom, boom. And they're going to be happening uh, in the background there. They're going to return themselves quickly. But I want to wait for them. Okay? I want to say task dot uh, when these are all done. Yeah. Hang around for client contacts, uh, client uh, temperature, and client location. Bless you. That's important, by the way, that when all versus wait all. If you do wait all, it's actually... It'll wait new, forever. Yeah. <laughs> now it says this is not an awaited task. So I'll wait for that. Mm -hmm. Okay? If I run that, that is only going to take... Uh, these usually take three seconds, three and a half boom, seconds. Boom, boom, boom. Yep. Now it's going to go and take the, as much time as the longest thing. So rather than simply adding them up, now it'll take as much time as the one item that is the longest. And you can also change this code if you wanted to say, uh, you know, I don't want to wait any longer. That seems like it took more than 1.7 seconds. Well, it had, to, it, had to start, it had to start up the first time. Right. So there's a second. So here you go. That's async. Okay? Mm. Now I'll, I'll back it out. Do, 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 do. That's not async. I'll change the page as well. This is a reverse demo. <laughs> Watch it suck. <laughs> See, feel the suck? You feel it? <laughs> okay. And that's just literally as simple as that. And right. asynchronous code, background code, non-IO, um, you know, letting, letting the ISP.NET thread get back to work. Well, mm -hmm. I always doing its work. Those things are hard. Well, not any longer. All right, you ready? I'm ready. All right. What I want you guys to do is go here. Let me tweet this. <laughs> Signal R is glorious. Tweet. Beep boop pop boop beep boop. Is it tweeting? It tweeted. Okay, cool. Guys, ready? You're back. So this is... an A4, huh? I'm in right. A4. All ah. right, we'll just see what happens there. This is in Azure. It would be a pity if HTML somebody shot five. someone it down in A4. It would be a shame A4. if someone shot me. This is in ASP.NET. This is in ASP.NET. 
This is in Azure. This is in JavaScript. This is using SignalR. This is what uh, the web, the new web looks like, the new ASP.NET looks like. Hey, I don't like you, guest 125. So part of the reason we're trying to get people on here, we want to see how many people we can get on concurrently. Mm -hmm. um, and and again, what, what what Scott's saying, this is you know this is modern web. This is uh, is that Damien that shot me. It sure is. Well, that's not nice at all. <laughs> so everyone's on here right now. You guys don't realize that I've hard coded a back door into the system. Where's my back door? My back door is not working. Oh, is it is it on the staging one? No, I don't know. I wanted to deploy the laser cat bomb. <laughs> <laughs> My failed demo. Help me, laser cats. <laughs> Let's chat the guy who owns the server. He's too busy playing laser cats. How many? <laughs> yeah, it died. <laughs> Maybe LCA wasn't happy with the cats. Ah! Oh, no! There we go. <laughs> we we have too many people doing it at the same. Where are the laser cats? I got the laser cats. Laser cats. <laughs> yes. Laser the modern cats. web, ladies and gentlemen. There's literally a line in there that says, if Hanselman presses the button, then we get laser cats. So I just want to say thank you very much for the SignalR team for putting the laser cats inside of SignalR. And you can go and check that out. Uh, and uh, <laughs> this has been Bleeding Edge ASP.net. Right, thank exactly. you very much. Uh, there we go. Good night, everybody. <laughs>